My friends, there is a wonderful, haunting Irish play called Molly Sweeney. It tells the story of Molly, a woman born blind whose sight is recovered by surgery. Before the operation, Molly knew things by the way they felt and smelt. Afterwards, she had to learn to associate visual objects with the names she already knew. So, for example, while she could identify an orange by its texture, its shape and its smell, she had to learn to associate those qualities with the round, coloured object that was now placed before her. Her doctor explained the situation simply. Seeing, he says, isn't understanding. This morning's Gospel reading of the cure of the blind man underscores that point. Perhaps we could say there are two miracles this morning. First of all, the sight restored, and then the gift of second sight that sees beyond the surface of things to see Jesus as Saviour and Lord, to see beyond the peripheral, the externals, and to come to know the God who is at the heart of everything. That's what coming to faith is. That's what true understanding is. That's what true sight is. And as the blind man comes to sight, the sighted onlookers move towards blindness. They don't see what following Jesus involves. You could say that they should have known better. After all, they had hindsight. They had seen the signs and miracles worked by Jesus. But fear and uncertainty crippled them, and they preferred to grope in darkness or twilight rather than to walk in the full light in the full light of God. When the blind man is cured, he follows Jesus. He moves on. That's what being a disciple means. When his sight is restored, he sees God in a different way and he follows Jesus with great enthusiasm. Little did he know where it might lead him. He doesn't reappear in the Gospel pages again. However, something tells me that his following demanded that he would focus his sight again and again and again, as new circumstances demanded new understanding and new vision. And when that journey, perhaps, brought him to the foot of the cross, he must have seen the power and presence of God in a way that he could never have imagined or expected. That's the way of the disciple, of the twelve, of Mary, of the blind man, and of you and me. We want to understand, but our minds can be distracted. We want to see, but our vision can be blurred. We want to follow, but the road can be hard. But Christians also have the gift of foresight. We know what the future holds. The Lord Jesus triumphed over sin and death, and we know that no matter what comes our way, in the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, nothing absolutely nothing can defeat us. Molly's eyesight was restored in the operation, but she had vision just for one summer. Her husband and her doctor were devastated as her, as her sight faded, and they could only see failure and loss. But not Molly. Before the operation she was blind from birth, but a deeper sense allowed her to see, a condition the doctors called blind sight. When her physical sight was restored, she was challenged to see and understand anew. In many ways, this was disturbing. When the sight had faded from her eyes again, she had to learn to see and understand yet again. That summer, Molly saw the blue cornflowers that she had already known by smell. She saw the sea that she had already known by touch. She saw the musical score that she already knew from hearing. She saw the ice cream 
that she already knew from taste. She saw the face of her husband that she already knew in love. We think we know what it is to see. We think we know what it is to be blind. But the truth of discipleship is that until we see the Lord face to face, we must continually learn again and again and again what it is to see.